So this morning we have some speakers share their insights and their observations of the social media functioning in our world everywhere. It's just the visible part of our world. There are a lot of things you know, improving, in preparation, and in hibernating. So um, my name is Isaac Mao. I'm the co-curator with David for this symposium. We want to bring more voices to be heard, bring more people to the stage of uh, Ars Electronica to, to share their insights, share their knowledge and uh, theories. So we want to see how words in different situations, they are trying to change themselves in different contexts, different conditions. And this morning we have three female speakers and we don't want to be too uh, unbalanced. So we bring some other male speakers and another uh, one more female speakers this afternoon to give us talks and share their uh, ideas, share their insights about their own country, about their connectivities around the world. So the first speaker will be Professor Hu Yong from School of uh, Journalism and Mass Communication of Beijing University. And Hu Yong is very um, prominent uh, uh, speaker and uh, uh, scholar in China talking about uh, information technology in uh, society. And it, he's, he's also a writer and blogger, you know, conduct those um, daily messages to the public to try to be the bridge between the public mass and the, you know, the, the authorities to, to try to be the bridge. So it's, uh, he will try to give us some you know, understanding about how to interpret this complex uh, country. And the second speaker will be Suk Suk Ten from Singapore. But he is now, she's now um, also a diplomat in, uh, uh, from grassroots uh, between China and uh, Singapore. And she is a producer to the, you know, online documentary project called Twitter Mandarin to interview a lot of Twitter users, social media users around the world to see how these new kinds of bulk of tools and technologies giving the common people a chance to speak out, to connect the world. And uh, he's also an entrepreneur to the project kin Kinetic uh, Media to see how to use the business way to uh, spread the new technologies. And we have Ma Marcus Beckedo who from uh, Germany and uh, the founder, famous uh, blogger of uh, uh, that community and founder of uh, Republican, the blogger conference. And he is also one of the first bulk of uh, digital politician around the world, you know, uh, as a pioneer to conduct digital democracy to his community, as well to be the role model to other communities. So let's welcome uh, Mr. Hu Yong first to be on the stage and share China insights. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, it's my great honor to be here to share some of my uh, unique Chinese internet experience. And I'm not very sure that <clears throat> how many people know how much about Chinese internet. I think whenever we talk, we are talking about the Chinese internet, the one word immediately uh, came into mind, that is censorship. But today I want to, uh, <clears throat> I want to uh, tell the, uh, another side of the Chinese internet. That is how people uh, mobilize, 
organize and express themselves through the uh, internet and new media. So my topic is uh, the internet and social mobilization in China, and I hope to give you uh, some of the uh, pictures about the Chinese cyberspace, which is very exciting. <clears throat> now, I like to skip this, those uh, academic terms, uh, defines about the, uh, what is social mo mobilization and what is the uh, social movement. Uh, I'm going to use a, a framework from two American scholars, uh, which they are trying to uh, use the mode of participation and the intensity of the action as indicators for defining group actions. So we can, we can say the horizontal arrow and also the vertical arrow. And uh, <clears throat> so the group actions can be classified as either individualistic or collectivistic, depending on the uh, number of participants. And on the other hand, uh, the, in terms of intensity, group actions can be persuasive. So we don't have to uh, explain what is uh, persuasive. Uh, action such as uh, collecting signatures or lobbying or petitioning. But uh, at the other extreme, we, we can see the confrontational strategy, uh, which is uh, much more extreme, and maybe uh, mass demonstrations, and also uh, maybe some sub subversive actions. And uh, using this framework, we can actually, we can divide you know, uh, we can specify uh, clearly four different behavioral patterns, you know, uh, in the uh, uh, Chinese uh, group actions. So the first one is the individualistic persuasive actions. And the second one is individualistic confrontational actions. And the third one is collectivistic persu persuasive actions. And th the last one is collectivistic confrontational actions. <clears throat> So I'm using this uh, framework, and also we <clears throat> factor in the uh, internet. And we can say internet can play two kinds of roles. One is the initiator, and the other is, is supporter. So the internet can be used to, to initiate persuasive actions and also the confrontational actions. But uh, on a lot of occasions, uh, their role is uh, simply is a, is a supportive role. We all know the, the, the famous, uh, uh, you know, the, the Twitter revolution in Iran. And also uh, this morning, uh, <clears throat> uh, a, people are talking about the Tunisia uh, uh, revolution. So we can draw the conclusion that uh, um, on many times, actually, internet only play a supportive role instead of an uh, uh, initiative role. <clears throat> so. Before I uh, <clears throat> go into the uh, main topic, I'd like first to give you some uh, historical background about the uh, social mobilization prior to the age of internet. And we can actually divide uh, the uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, different development uh, phases. So beginning from 1949 and until the, uh, 1976, Actually, the party was the only mechanism for social mobilization. <clears throat> and uh, uh, not until the, uh, you know, we call it the, uh, the so-called uh, reform and opening up policy, then the development of a relatively autonomous society began to uh, appear. And uh, we can see a lot of indications, like the uh, society became relatively independent source of resources, opportunities. And also, we can see the rise of uh, independent uh, social, uh, uh, social forces like businessmen, uh, private entrepreneurs, and also uh, intellectuals. And also, we can see civil society for a long time actually just disappear uh, in modern China. <clears throat> but after uh, 1979, uh, uh, people begin to form uh, a certain kinds of uh, uh, organizations uh, like trade unions and chambers of commerce and recreational and sports associations and also academic society and so on. <clears throat> However, uh, the tight control over a prolonged period in the past has considerably weakened the Chinese society's ability to mobilize and to organize itself. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> so then I 
this morning talks about the uh, unique uh, you know, uh, collective action problem. So China is a typical example. It's very hard in China to initiate uh, any uh, social action, uh, any uh, group actions. <clears throat> and on the other hand, because of the deepening of the Chinese uh, economic reform, so the, uh, there were uh, many social conflicts and the protests actually since the 1990s have taken on the upward trend in terms of, of, of number, size, and intensity. So uh, people have uh, concrete statistics, statistics about you know, how often these uh, incidents occur, uh, uh, those protests occur. And, uh, and one of the uh, most outstanding uh, characteristic of this uh, new trend is the use of advanced electronic technology as the most obvious uh, new feature. <clears throat> and uh, it improves communications among uh, protesters and also allow protesters to broadcast news about their predicament to supporters with the help of not only the mass media, sometimes even from the international community. <clears throat> so uh, this use of advanced uh, electronic technology is closely associated, associated with the, uh, uh, the rise of the Chinese internet. So we can see a lot of, lot of figures. Uh, for example, this is a new, uh, the latest uh, uh, internet development uh, uh, report in China, which was released on July, uh, that, that is two months early. <clears throat> so the number of netizens in China had reached uh, 485 million. And uh, also mobile phone users in China has, had exceeded 800 million, so th those are, are the very big numbers. <clears throat> and uh, so we keep this in mind. We, we now look at the uh, different, uh, <clears throat> you know, protest behavior uh, among the Chinese people. So as I uh, mentioned earlier, first I, I'm going to talk about the resistance of individuals. So those are the, uh, they have also clear uh, characteristics First, those are the small, localized, and isolated cases actually uh, lack uh, uh, ideological and organizational affiliations uh, required for linking them together. So for, for many times, they are not political, or it depends how do you define what is political. And the, on the other hand, the, in the internet, however, has enabled protests that involve a small number of people, even just a lone individual, to attract wider attention. That is why when we are talking about the group action, we actually we start f from the resistance of individuals. <clears throat> so they are creating the same effect as a large crowd gathering in the street. <clears throat> Now there are some very uh, famous uh, Chinese internet cases, and uh, uh, maybe I don't have much time to uh, tell about the, the, you know, the extraordinary story. But uh, here I just gave a, a, a glimpse of a, a, a very famous uh, case, uh, which has occurred in, 2000, uh, <clears throat> in 2010. Uh, uh, it involves a, a family, you know, in in. Uh, in uh, Jiangxi province, actually th we can see from the pictures, three people set themselves on fire during a conflict in the, in, in the morning of September. And that's because the, the local government tries to grab their land. So they are fighting for their land and then the extreme uh, <coughs> thing happens. So we can see the uh, fire and also the grid, you know, uh, <coughs> the, the uh, the great owns it inflict upon the, 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 the family, which is called Zhong family. <clears throat> and uh, uh, also, this, why, why I'm talking about this, because all this is broadcast live uh, in, in microblogs in China, in China, we call it Weibo, which is a, a, you know, a Twitter-style service, uh, uh, hugely uh, popular among the Chinese uh, netizens. And uh, also, I'm using this case to indicate one of the trends. Uh, that is, uh, in many cases of individual resistance, those who define their rights, you know, have resort to killing or injuring themselves in order to fight. 
<clears throat> so uh, from the uh, pictures above, we see that th those people, they, you know, they actually set themselves on fire. So that's killed. Uh, at least uh, uh, one, one man uh, <clears throat> died during this incident. Uh, and on a lot of occasions, people also, you know, they injure, they uh, <clears throat> make, they uh, 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 resort to self-sacrifice in their struggle with powerful authority, authorities for rights and fairness. So they actually, uh, the cases involve the destruction, the damaging and crippling of their bodies. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, that is because a lot of people actually, they, they are using suicide, all those, uh, you know, uh, uh, extreme uh, uh, means, uh, because as a way of going after, as, as a way of, you know, trying to uh, demand their rights, they have exhausted all formal administrative and legal avenues and still has received no acceptable explanation or help for his predicament. So that's, that is why this is very uh, extreme. And in terms of internet mobilization, news that involves victims killing or injuring themselves to fight due to their extreme nature and also dramatic effects will easily find their way to the internet and will stimulate substantial online discussions. That is, we, have, we just have a huge public opinion on the Chinese internet whenever this kind of cases happened. Mm. Now there are many more, many more cases, like the, uh, uh, <clears throat> this one is actually, he opened his chest and uh, this guy, he severed his finger these are very famous uh, Chinese cases, so I, I don't have time, so I will not uh, go through them. Uh, <clears throat> and also I'm going to uh, talk about the, uh, the, the, the power of visual mobilization. Whenever you see those extreme cases, there's always accompanied by you know, videos or photographs, and uh, <clears throat> so uh, it's a kind of, uh, we say it's a, a uh, kind of weapon of the week uh, to quote the famous scholar James Scott, because he discovers, uh, he discovers in his study about the, you know, the southeastern peasants, their resistance that an open and organized, you know, public political activity is often a lux luxury for those uh, underprivileged. So there is a need, therefore, for, to, for us to pay more attention to the protests that concern people's everyday lives. <coughs> So when victims kill or injure themselves to fight, their actions became weapons of the weak. And now I'm coming to uh, the uh, second part. Oh no, at first I just, uh, uh, <clears throat> just gave the, uh, uh, a brief summary about the individualistic uh, protests. So unlike organized collective resistance, these acts of victims <clears throat> killing or injuring themselves to fight are mostly strategies uh, adopted by individual members of the under class in the course of seeking solutions for their specific problems. So these actions usually are not political and they don't have the capacity of being transformed into large scale social movements. <clears throat> so the influence of individual protesters actually varies uh, from case to case. But now I'm going to talk about the collective one. <clears throat> so uh, first, uh, we uh, would like to say at present, China has entered an age of rights. So with farmers and workers and also an emerging middle class all striving uh, for their civil rights. So the first type of uh, 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 social movement actually involves farmers. Uh, I just give you an example. Uh, like most of the uh, people, uh, the farmers, uh, they are actually, at the very beginning, they are the, the first beneficiaries of market reforms. But however, the good days uh, soon, you know, did not, did not last for long. So with the speed of urbanization accelerating, so farmland, you know, the, the farmland seizure actually gains pace. So farmers who lose their lands they fight for, for this fiercely. <clears throat> then the second uh, type of, uh, 
No, this is a very famous photo. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, in uh, Guangxi, <coughs> in Guangxi, with, uh, in a village. So the village head actually leads his people you know, against the government officials to protect the land. So this slogan is, uh, is uh, uh, roughly reads, if the government can break the law, then we will risk our lives to protect it. So that's uh, how dramatic it is. You can see uh, the uh, peasants even, they bring out you know, the coffin. You can see the coffin in the middle of the, uh, uh, the picture. That is uh, going to fight to the death. <coughs> and another uh, group of people is uh, uh, workers. So uh, you all know that the, uh, uh, <coughs> the China becomes a world factory. So it also created the world's largest working classes. And however, the treatment of these workers you know, have received in, in the shop <clears throat> is, uh, is in sharp contrast to the enormous wealth they have produced for their nation. I mean, the low pages, uh, uh, low wages, and frequent injuries, and deep-rooted institutional discrimination actually, you know, prompted the transformation of many workers from pure wage earners to protesters. Uh, you can see, for example, like this Apple computer, most of them are produced in China. <clears throat> so they have Chinese workers' blood in it. Uh, now you can see the uh, in beginning in 2010, uh, the uh, Chinese workers you begin to form themselves into you know they trying to uh, uh, bring out strikes. So this is New York Times uh, a news report, uh, which reads in China labor movement enabled by technology. <clears throat> and uh, the third type of civil movement involves uh, middle class men and women defending their rights. Mostly those people are property owner classes. You know, they buy the houses. They're the first batch of people who can afford to their own houses. <clears throat> so property owners are a typical example of middle classes. So many, many of them, when confronting oppression and abuse from the joint force of developers, and property management companies and local government departments. So they have made direct appeal to their civil rights to defend their property. And uh, also, this kind of uh, a group is especially, you know, they are keen on the uh, environmental issues. Uh, if some, you know, environmental pollution which is near their community, they will try to uh, rise up to, you know, to seek solutions to this, this kind of uh, 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 conflicts. Uh, <clears throat> this is in Guang. Uh, this is in Guangzhou, which uh, in a, uh, is a typical uh, community protest uh, <clears throat> because of the Guangzhou municipal government. So uh, has chose has chosen a certain site for a garbage incineration plant. <clears throat> so people go to the uh, uh, they go on the street and they go to the uh, uh, the in front of the building of the municipal uh, government. So. We can say they are wearing masks and they have their slogans. And they are tweeting about it. So they, they even have a hashtag, uh, which is called PYLJ. Uh, it's a Chinese uh, 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 abbreviation for this uh, uh, protest. <coughs> so uh, those uh, collective resistance indicates that the participants have a high degree of awareness of their rights as citizens. And, uh, uh, and they're Obviously, all of them are using online tools, especially the, uh, <clears throat> especially the, uh, uh, the, the uh, Web 2.0 applications. So I gave you some, some very uh, astonishing figures. Like in China, we now have 1.3 million BBS and 100 million BBS users. And also, we have 295 million bloggers. <clears throat> So 64.4% of netizens, they are bloggers. And uh, now we have this, uh, the, the, you know, the, uh, <coughs> the latest development, which is microblogging. Uh, <coughs> uh, this, this, this figure is from uh, the December of last year. So uh, I think all the figures now are coming, <coughs> you know, they are rising up. <coughs> so I just gave you the last uh, year's number. Uh, in which uh, it in indicates that there are six, three 
uh, 0.11 million microbloggers. <coughs> and also among mobile internet users, 15% of them are microblogging. So they are using their they're using their mobile phones, and whenever you know there is something happens. <coughs> and, uh, and one of the very interesting trends, which I think all Chinese observers will have to uh, you know, treat it carefully, that is uh, from the picture we can see uh, a new exciting development, uh, you know, is many individuals this year actually have announced their candidacy for seats at the town and county level people's congress election. This election was, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, was held every five years. In China, we, we cannot elect uh, provincial officials, uh, neither the, the, you know, the central uh, uh, government officials, but we can elect the county level and the township level officials. So that is why, beginning in uh, May the 7th this year, so the, all of China, they, they have this uh, election. So many people, they announce in their Weibo account, that is in the microblogging account, that they will be, you know, they will be running for public office <coughs> at various local districts throughout China. So those independent candidates have run their campaigns primarily by using microblogging site uh, that is Sina, Sina Weibo, uh, uh, Xinlang Weibo. Uh, it's, a, it's a popular Twitter-like service. So it's all get started with this brave woman. <clears throat> you can see the picture. And uh, he uh, announced his candidacy in May this year, but he was, uh, his, his home was searched and his public speaking sessions interrupted and her campaign banners and flyers confiscated. So the government actually you know, uh, try to, uh, uh, trying to block her into uh, this uh, independent election. <clears throat> so he, she actually failed, <clears throat> but she continues to post her experience on Weibo, so triggering a rash of Weibo candidates. Uh, even some very famous, uh, like uh, one guy, uh, which, which is named Li Chengpeng, <clears throat> he actually, he has three million followers on his Weibo account, and he announced his candidacy. That is very, you know, uh, incredible. And <clears throat> many, uh, uh, many who are willing to follow suit are actually astonished by the, uh, you know, by the uh, protest, the intensity of protest in China these years. So they are thinking that uh, instead of uh, instead of, you know, to go on streets, why don't we battle it out on in People's Congress? <clears throat> so that explains this uh, new trend. And, and, and the, this is government's reaction. We, you can say the, from the People's Daily, the party uh, announces that we reject independent candidate. But those people still, they are, you know, striving for, for their goals. For the uh, first time, you can say in Guangzhou, <coughs> and this guy has his poster. And <coughs> uh, this poster actually uh, reads, is elect a neighbor to be your rep representative. <coughs> uh, also, there are some other uh, more uh, uh, obvious slogans, like why complain about the darkness when you can light a candle? And democracy needs the participation of our citizens. Please cast your vote. So this is still going on. <clears throat> I mean, the election is still going on. It's, it will last until uh, next year, so we can see even more dramatic uh, uh, <clears throat> events happening here. And now I'm coming, uh, the time is short, and now I'm coming to my conclusion. I, I would say social mobilization in China have two strong characteristics, regardless of whether the rights defenders are farmers, workers, or middle class. <clears throat> So first of all, it's a form of grassroots mobilization. By a grassroots mobilization, uh, I mean, uh, you know, seldom you can find professional organizations or professional social movement or mobilization. You know, they are not, they are very rare in, in the Chinese uh, landscape. <clears throat> uh, so we don't have the uh, institutional environments for people to be organized professionally. So we have to result to grassroots mobilization. 
On the other hand, it's a, uh, it's a form of network mobilization. So the internet helps build links and facilities, collective actions among Chinese people, you know, who are living in a social uh, reality. While we don't have enough, we only have paper freedom of expression, of association, of assembly. <coughs> So the internet, my conclusion is the internet does not perform the same political function in China as it does in other countries where there is more political freedom. So the internet cannot change China's political life in a dramatic way, even if I say internet is playing a great important role, but <clears throat> it still it cannot change the Chinese political life by its, its forces alone. So however, it can enhance the existing social capital built on the foundation of civil rights and obligations so that social forces that are operating independent of the state, you know, they have opportunity to grow and prosper. Thank you for your attention. <clears throat>